recently. I've been thinking about how many cameras I actually have and I laid them out on a the table here so, so I could be able to count them and it became quite a lot. So yeah, I'm curious how many they actually are. But in any case, I'll go through every camera, say something, a few words about every camera, maybe how I got them or what I think about it and yeah. Something special about each camera. Yeah, something special about each camera. So let's get started here because otherwise we'll sit here for 30 hours of <laughs> coming to talk, talk in depth about everything. So yes, let's start with the Nikon pile which I have here. So this is a Nikon uh, F101S and this one, uh, it's a, like electronic camera from like, beginning of the 90s. First Nikon with good AF. I bought it because, well, I wanted to experiment with these sort of cameras. And then continue to a Nikon FG. And uh, this camera, I bought it because I uh, needed a lens. It came with a 50 millimeter lens, which is very good. And But I actually use this camera a lot and I, I do like it. This, it's not bad at all, even though it has gotten a bad name because it's not as advanced as other ones, but it's, it's nice. And then another Nikon, uh, Nikon F601S. <laughs> These straps get a bit tangled. Uh, this is one I have not bought. Uh, this is my father's camera. He bought it in maybe 1991 or something like that. And yeah, quite a few family photos have been taken with this camera. Yeah. And it's the manual focus version of this 801S. More Nikon. This is my favorite Nikon, the Nikon F3, and it's, yeah, this is the most advanced 35mm SLR I have. It's, uh, yeah, it's perfect, I would say. It's my favorite 35mm camera also. I've at least used 50 rolls in this camera, I think, so I have plenty of photos. Let's continue with, can you guess what it is? My second Nikon F3. And why do I have two? Well, because this one I bought first, and it broke, there is some mechanical error or something that I cannot advance the film and also the shutter doesn't really, so I don't know, it's got jammed or something. And also at that point, it was cheaper to buy another Nikon F3 than to have this repaired or even looked at. So, <laughs> but now it's probably the, it's cheaper to repair it, of course, since the prices have gone up. But who knows, maybe I'll try to repair it myself. That was all of the Nikons, let's continue with the Soviet corner. This is a Zenit EM, which I actually got for free. There was a old guy who, well, he searched for someone to donate some cameras to, and this was one of them that I got. Everyone doesn't really like the Soviet cameras that much, but I actually enjoy using them, and this uh, Zenit EM is it's quite fun to use, and I like the picture pictures that it produces. Of course, it depends on the lens also, but... And at the moment, I'm shooting on all of this one, so expect a review soon. <laughs> right, so the next Soviet camera is Sorky 4. Uh, this one I found at the flea market for maybe 18 euros or something, which is insanely cheap if you compare what they cost nowadays. Maybe you can find, if you go to Russia, you can find it for that cheap, but it's quite a good find. And also I like this camera, even though it's a bit difficult to use sometimes. Right, and... <laughs> oh, of course, another uh, Soviet range hunter, the Fed 2. This one I've taken one roll with, but it has a problem. There are these uh, pinholes in the shutter, so it, there are, it produces light leaks, and then the shutter just sort of got some problems, so it needs to have the shutter fixed. But I like the Sorky more than this one. This is a bit older also, but yeah. The last Soviet camera, the Lomos Mena symbol, a compact camera. Actually, I didn't have so many expectations for this camera, but I really do like it. Uh, I shot one roll with it and I will shoot some more. It's actually quite fun to use and, and the results are not bad. The next, we can go to another 35 mm SLR. This is a Minolta SRT-102. This is actually a very good SLR, but I haven't used it that much. Maybe because I don't have so many lenses for it. I have many more for the Nikon and you can easily find uh, a lot of good lenses for Nikon cameras. The Minoltas don't have that many and it's not bad. It's a really good mechanical camera, so I don't know why I haven't used it more. Mm. Another 35 mm SLR. This is a Cosina. It looks like Cosina. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, it's... Cosina CT7 or computer CT7, which is an 80s uh, manual advanced SLR. And you might notice something, there are no knobs here for selecting the shutter. So yeah, you have to select the shutter by pressing buttons and it's it's not very ideal. It's The picture quality is good. I mean, it's nothing really to complain about because it mostly depends on the lens anyway. But like user experience is a bit so-so, I mean, yeah, but this camera I also got for free with the scene it, so yeah. Right, so that was all of the 35mm SLRs. Let's continue with pocket cameras. And I 
don't have that many actually. I have more SLRs than pocket cameras. Uh, this is a Yashica MF1, which is a manual focus camera, but with audio exposure. So, I mean, the results are not bad. It does the job, but mm -hmm, it's an okay pocket camera. The Ricoh 35 FM. Yes, 35 FM. <laughs> this one has a bit special story because I found it in the trash. I wasn't searching for anything. I was just, you know, uh, putting my metal cans to the recycle and the recycle bin was quite full and then when I opened it it was like there's a camera what <laughs> then I took it home and and it doesn't have any problem it worked just fine just some cleaning and yeah I haven't shot a roll with it yet but I will do that and see see how it turns out so yeah the next pocket camera the most advanced one this is actually a camera from my childhood which we were using mostly I think and there are a lot of photos with this one taken I've seen I don't know if it works it requires a different battery let's see such such a battery so i should get one and try and see if it works i think it works this is a very advanced uh, pocket camera and quite good image quality also and what camera is it well samsung mini zoom or something like that yeah next pocket camera a pentax something pentax uh, pino 35j i have shot one roll with this it's an okay pocket camera i mean it's, mm, yeah and this camera I also found, not in the trash, but it was next to it, so yeah, haven't used it. It's a Kodak, Kodak KV270. I don't know how it, how it is. Maybe I'll shoot one roll with this Mabel or not, I don't know. Pocket cameras are not my favorite type of cameras, anyway. Lastly, this is basically like a disposable camera, but you can reuse film in it. It's very simple. Doesn't even have a brand. It just says 35mm focus free on it, so yeah wow. yeah it's very very simple camera <laughs> could be fun to try right so the pocket cameras are finished let's go to medium format cameras those i have much fewer of okay so the first uh, medium format camera i have actually this was my first one it's a agfa it's led 3 and it's it's not bad it's a rangefinder mm, folding camera taking a few rolls with it but it seems like the focusing needs a bit of adjustment now that some picture were a bit out of focus but yeah, should be easily fixed. The next folding camera, which is a rather rare brand or a brand that I think very few know about, is called Virgin or Virgin. It's made in Germany or it's designed in Germany in the 1930s. I think this one is made in the late 40s. I'm not sure, but I determined that based on the lens it uses. It's a 6x9 folding camera. It's, it's, it doesn't have this coated lens so the pictures are a bit flat, but it's okay. I mean, one thing I want to try with it is to shoot 35 mm in it, so I get like a panoramic image. It'd be fun to try, but it has a 110 mm lens, so I don't know how, how wide it will be actually. Yeah, but one more project to try. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, this is the oldest camera I have. And it's quite good condition for being this old as well. And the next folding camera is my late... No, wrong button. <laughs> it's the latest addition to my uh, collection. Of course, I haven't gotten used to it yet, so I pressed the wrong buttons. And uh, I recently repaired this one and it works fine now. And I have ordered more medium format film, so when that arrives, we'll go and take some pictures. Yes, looking forward to it. Uh, next, we have a heavy one, and I might have lied when I said the Soviet cameras were, but they were all of the Soviet cameras because this is also a Soviet camera. It's a Kiev 60, the beast of a camera. <laughs> it has quite the heavy, shutter sound it was on bulb i think this is actually a very nice medium format camera the only problem is this uh, film advance it sort of doesn't line up the frames very well it's sort of it's great they, they overlap a little bit and it's i mean you can fix it i tried to fix it but it's a bit difficult i got it to be like almost like a lineup but some at the end a little bit line up on each other and it's always the nice part of the picture that get destroyed that way so but the image quality is really good it's a bit of a is it a bit heavy? It has a very loud sound when you use it, but yeah, it's not bad. If you want a medium format camera, you can get one of these. I mean, but get one which has been serviced because they, a lot of them have this problem. They had a lot of problems with uh, quality control in, the, in their factories in Ukraine. It was actually made in an old weapon factory, but... Wow! Yeah, it's called Arsenal. <laughs> they made them until 2006, I think, so this one could be made in the 90s doesn't have the you know I don't think the serial number 
it's last uh, date on this one. But. Right, so the last uh, medium format is a Kodak camera, a popular portrait brownie. Yeah, this one I have not used because you need a special type of spools for it, uh, 620 spools. Of course, the film in that format is not made anymore, so if you want to use it, you need to have two spools, 620 spools and uh, re-spool 120 film onto it. I could do that if I could find another spool. There's only one in the camera, so yeah. If I find that, I might try it. It's also actually a like pocket, actually a point and shoot, the first point and shoot maybe even, because there are no settings on it, just a, just a shutter, <laughs> basically. So that was all of the medium format. Then I have this rather weird camera. It's some sort of, I don't know, I think 90s bridge camera. It's the Canon Epoca. Yeah, it looks like a video camera, but it's not. <laughs> so you hold it like this, basically like a video camera, so you might get mistaken for that. And it has this flash in the lens cap. The specs actually don't look that bad. I mean, it can probably produce quite nice photos. And yeah, this is probably the most odd camera I have. Yeah, that is. This is, it's also a 35 millimeter pocket camera, so I was lying, it wasn't all of them yet. But it's an underwater camera, so it's a bit special one. I haven't tried this one either, so not so much <laughs> underwater photography in where I live at the moment. But I can try it, maybe. It's your most colorful camera. Yeah, definitely most colorful. <laughs> and uh, this is not a 35mm, but it is a pocket camera. It's a Kodak Instamatic, which also, this is where Instagram gets its name from also, because it has this uh, square format pictures. That's why they are square on Instagram or were. But the problem with this one, it uses a special type of cartridge film, 126 film, I think, and it's not made anymore. And if you can find it, you still need to develop it yourself. Uh, usually it's color film, but I don't know, it's maybe. I haven't used it. I don't know if this even works, so yeah. Right, so let's go digital. I think I uh, went through all the film cameras now. This is a Samsung NV. A pocket camera, which I found on the street. <laughs> Not on the street, but like next to a dumpster, let's say. I don't know if it works because I don't have the battery charger for it. It didn't come with it, so. It's quite old also, it's like 2005 or something, so I don't know. More digital, well, uh, this is a Fuji X-T1. It used to be my main camera. Uh, I now use it more, mostly for time lapses and such things, because it has smaller files than my Main camera, which is now an X-T2, which of course I will not show. More digital, GoPro Hero 7 Black. Uh, this one I use a lot. A lot of the videos on this channel is made with this camera alone. So maybe the quality is not always the best, but it's, it's quite good actually, considering the size of the camera and, and, and yeah, how sturdy it is. And yeah, it's a well-made camera for doing all sort of like vlogging or using in extreme situations. For example, I have dipped it down a well to get a shot, also underwater a lot, on bicycle. Yeah, it's a fantastic small camera. Then we will go to the most expensive camera I have. And the newest, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, my drone. It is a... wait. It's a... what's the name again? DJI Mavic Pro 2. How can I forget the name? <laughs> yeah, the most expensive one, but the most maybe versatile because it can fly and okay it's a drone but that's the main purpose for me at least is to use it as a camera so that's why I count it as a camera one which I think is quite fair and this also I use a lot so it doesn't stay stay in the closet <laughs> collecting dust and then we have broken cameras so I have some more film first of all uh, we have a Canon 400D and this was my first digital camera I bought, digital SLR. Now it has some problem with the back, it just shows like the screen is completely white, so I don't know. If I could find another one which is also broken but in another way I could repair it, so I might do that. Not that I have any practical use for it, but just because. <laughs> this camera, I don't know if it works or not. It's a Honeymix 35XL, so an 80s uh, 35 automatic pocket camera basically. And this one was found in an abandoned building. <laughs> And there's a film in it also. But you don't take stuff from abandoned. Usually I don't take, but I decided to be a bit less, let's say, strict about it because if there are cameras, and especially if there's film in it, I can develop it and see, maybe rescue some old frames and see what is on it. But the problem though, the back of it was a little bit open, 
So I don't know if, if they'll destroy the photos or not. It's a bit. Maybe I will develop it in, in black and white chemicals and see if there is anything at all on it. But of course, if I would find something more, some more better 35mm or any film camera in an abandoned place, I would probably take it. Depends on the situation. If I can find an owner for the place, I would try that first. Like, try to find the owner. Can I, can I like have it or can I buy it or something? Because it, usually abandoned places get destroyed either by nature or people, so yeah. Also, cameras are your weakness. It's my weakness. There was one place which had a lot of vintage computers. Like, now I regret I didn't rescue some of them. And because next time I went to check the place, it was flattened by the ground. There was nothing left of the building. And there were like 80s to 86 computers, like and old. Uh, portable computers, not laptop, but portable computers. And quite rare stuff. So, And there was also a 6x9 medium format and larger. Yeah, but they're gone now. What can we do? Continue with the broken camera. This is a East German Praktika and... Which one? I don't know actually which practica it is, but... And it has some problem when you advance the film, the shutter also goes. And it has water damage, so there's rust and things in it. Can probably be fixed with some patience. Needs to clean out the rust and... Possibly... Wait! Start working? Sort of. Not really, it needs some some adjustments I think. So finally we have reached the end with the last 35mm or the broken one. This one I found or I bought in Denmark. It was a whole system like three lenses, the camera, light meter, flash. It was like 20 euros. You could get such crazy prices for, for cameras back then like 10 years ago if you, if you looked around in flea markets but nowadays they are mostly like people have bought them already. In any case I have shot maybe one roll with this, then the shutter got stuck in the middle. It has a leaf shutter and it's, uh, it's the weakness of this camera. If this leaf shutter gets stuck, I've heard it's really, really difficult to get it fixed. You need to find someone who actually knows how to fix it. Fixing this yourself is a bit on nice to mere level, so... So yeah, it's too bad. Yeah, since I have a whole system for it, but I guess I'll just sell it and... Yeah. Right. Whew, so how many cameras did we get to? I guess I'll put a counter in the in the video so I can count like every camera <laughs> because I didn't count them now. <laughs> yeah. So the next. Shall we count now? Let's count. One, two, three, four, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Thirty-three cameras. Right. So it seems like I have thirty-three cameras. Is that too much or? <laughs> I don't think that everyone gets thirty-three. No. No, it's not. It's it's a bit much maybe. But there are, I've seen worse cases, like on Flickr there was a guy who had 500 cameras and he had like a whole room for it, the shelves like full with, with cameras. This is like a camera store. It's like a camera store, I could start selling cameras. <laughs> right, so now we have looked at all my cameras, I will challenge myself and actually choose 10 cameras which I will keep. The other ones I will, will sell. I guess, or donate if I cannot sell them. So that will be the topic for the next video. Thank you for staying with me so far in this video and looking at my obsession with cameras. See you next time. Bye.